Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly briefing. Uh, we have folks today from Public Health Madison Dane County, our fantastic Parks Department, and we'll hear from our City Bicycle Coordinator. A couple of things off the top. You might not know, but April is Stress Awareness Month. Something that might help with that is that April is also National Financial Literacy Month. The more you know, the less stressed you are, perhaps. It's also National Volunteer Month. A great way to relieve stress is to help other people. And if none of that works, it's National Poetry Month, uh, which also may relieve your stress. Uh, so with that, we will hear from Doug Vagley of Public Health Madison-Dane County with our weekly public health update. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Doug Fagley. I'm the Operations Section Chief uh, for the uh, Incident Command Structure for Public Health Madison-Dane County and our response to the COVID-19. Want to just give some brief notes on vaccination. Uh, it's going wonderful um, and we are doing great here in Dane County. As of March 31st, 38.2% of the population of Dane County has received their first doses. 38.2%. It's absolutely wonderful, and I hope that we keep going in that direction. 22% have completed the full uh, schedule of the vaccinations and are completely uh, vaccinated. However, I think one of the most impressive uh, percentages that we're at right now is our 65 plus um, population is 89% vaccinated. 89% of our 65 plus population is vaccinated. It's a very impressive number. And I will just say that the 65 plus population has set the bar high for the rest of us. And I hope that we can all make it uh, to that same percentage at some point in time where we're looking at 89, 90% of Dane County fully vaccinated. As you've probably heard as of April 5th, uh, next Monday, Anybody 16 or above uh, is eligible for vaccine. Um, that opens up the door wide uh, to a lot more people, to the rest of our population. Um, and we are still uh, exceeding um, our supply uh, by a little bit. Um, demand is still continuing to be very high uh, in uh, Dane County. Uh, we are in getting an increased uh, amount of vaccine, uh, but we still don't have enough to, to meet the full demand. However, that being said, next week, uh, we, the Public Health Madison Dane County, is receiving 7,000 first doses of vaccine. So we're going to make a good dent in our population uh, with those 7,000 doses. Um, and remember that, that we're just uh, one vaccinator in all of Dane County. We have all of our health systems and our pharmacies uh, that are vaccinating in Dane County. It's a team effort and we are really working as quickly as we can to get vaccination in arms as quick as possible. Want to make sure that you know to sign up to get a uh, vaccine through Public Health Madison in Dane County. Head to the vaccinate.wi.gov website. That registers you and we pull our names from that registry to send out invites uh, to come to the Alliant Energy Center uh, for a vaccination. I also wanna make sure that we acknowledge that there are a lot of different people that are doing mobile clinics as well as Public Health Medicine, Dane County throughout the county to get to some of our uh, more underserved uh, populations so that we're able to uh, get out there and get vaccinations to people that may not be able to access the Alliant Energy Center. So we want you to explore all the options out there to get the vaccination. Uh, Public Health Madison, Dane County, some healthcare systems are available, even if you're not uh, affiliated with that healthcare system, they're still able to provide that vaccine. You can go to our website, publichealthmdc.com forward slash vax that will show you all of the different options and has links to all of our area healthcare systems, pharmacies, and other areas that you can receive a vaccination. We truly want you to explore all the options that are out there so that we can get the vaccination out as quickly as possible to our population. 
So yesterday, uh, there was a Supreme Court ruling um, that uh, removed the uh, statewide mask mandate in Wisconsin. I just want to remind everybody that that does not impact the mask mandate that we have in Dane County. It remains in effect and will continue to remain into, in place for the near future. The science is clear. Wearing a mask is a simple, proven way to prevent disease spread. So we'll continue to use this simple method to continue to remove and reduce the spread of COVID-19 in Dane County. In Dane County, masks are required indoors in any public spaces, regardless of your vaccine status. They're also required in some outdoor situations where people are gathered in 50 or more people. Yeah, and you can always uh, see our order on our website uh, for more details on uh, exactly what is and is not allowed um, under our emergency orders. I just want to remind you and urge you that, uh, again, wearing a mask is proven to reduce disease transmission. So no matter where you are uh, in the state, if you're outside of Dane County, we still urge you to wear your mask to protect the health and safety of the people that are around you, uh, the people that may be serving you in a restaurant, your friends, and your community. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And I just want to add um, on that last topic, how deeply disappointed I am in the Supreme Court's decision on the governor's mask order um, and with the folks that brought the lawsuit in the first place. Um, it, this action absolutely puts our state at additional risk, uh, risk of illness, risk of hospitalization, and even risk of death um, for folks in Wisconsin. We see, I think, a clearly what's happening in other states that have gotten rid of their masking orders, um, and it's not pretty. Um, so this is really disappointing. I just want to reiterate again that we still do have a face covering mandate here in Madison and Dane County, um, and we encourage people, no matter where they are, to use masks as a way to prevent disease. Uh, we have known all along that there's a few simple things that we need to do and that we need to keep doing to make it through this pandemic. Wear a mask, wash your hands, keep your distance, and when you're eligible, which is everybody now, get your vaccine. And this is not complicated. The science is clear. This is very straightforward. There are simple things that we can all do to keep ourselves safe and to keep our entire community safe. So I hope that you will join me. Um, and I just want to remind folks, the vaccinate.wi.gov site, please go sign up and get your vaccine, keep wearing your masks, um, and let's get this disease under control. All right, now on to uh, hopefully cheerful topics. Um, we're going to hear from Ann Shea, who's the Parks Department Public Information Officer, uh, to talk about some of our cleanup, spring cleanup efforts uh, for our parks. Thank you, Mayor. Hello, and good morning, good afternoon. I'm Ann Shea, Public Information Officer for Madison Parks, here to tell you about a few things going on this spring in Madison Parks. First up is this Saturday's dog park cleanup. We are still in need of volunteers at multiple locations to help clean up your dog parks. That would be Demetral, North Star, Odana School, Kwan, Sycamore, Walnut Grove, and Warner. Also, those that were closed, Demetral, Odana School and Walnut Grove are now reopened. The only remaining closed dog park is McCormick. We will need volunteers for Earth Day Challenge. Over 650 volunteers at 45 parks for Saturday, April 24th. Both of these are online 
Registration is super easy. Enter your email address, your name and email address, and you're good to go. And lastly, I have an exciting announcement for Save the Date, Ride the Drive 2021. It will be on Sunday, June 6th. It will not look as our typical downtown Ride the Drive, but you may recall from years ago, this was one that was done in the neighborhoods, and you can anticipate those to be in several neighborhoods, hopefully near yours, so that we can keep crowds low, but fun high. Again, that's ridethedrive.com if you want to check that out and bookmark that so that you can stay updated on the happenings that are going to be coming to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. Uh, I hope that folks will join in in spring cleaning um, and help uh, keep our parks and our dog parks uh, clean. Uh, lots of ways that you can help out around the city, uh, get outside, get a little exercise, and clean things up at the same time. Next, we're going to hear from Renee Calloway, who's our city's bicycle coordinator. All right, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Anne, for that exciting announcement about Ride the Drive. It couldn't be more of a perfect time, really, to start thinking about biking, in case you've noticed the weather forecast is about to take a turn. It looks like we're going to hit the 70-degree mark, and I think people are going to be getting those bikes out of the garage if they haven't been riding this winter. So I just wanted to have a few reminders for people. It's always good before the season starts to do a quick bike check and make sure you have air in your tires, your brakes work, your chain is working, and you're just in good condition and ready to take part in Ride the Drive. You can get those training miles in now so you can uh, maybe set a personal record. And um, I'm sure public health would join me in saying it's important to also wear a helmet. And if you're going to wear a helmet, it's important to wear it in a way that actually does its job. You don't want it to sit back on your head, and you don't want it to be too loose so it doesn't stay in place. So take a look at your helmet. I'll make sure it's in good shape. Check your kids' helmets and make sure you have them fitted in a way where they're actually doing the job that they're intended to do. All right, so maybe you have been riding around your neighborhood last year, this winter, and you're kind of looking for somewhere new to get out, and you want to explore some new places. Um, one of the easiest things is just to go online. We have a bike route finder on our Bike Madison website. You can also find out how to get a paper map if you prefer that method, but the great part about our online map is it'll show you the whole city and the rest of the county as well if you're really looking to get a new adventure in. We have an excellent regional trail system that's well connected and just really beautiful, can get you out to different parks. Maybe you're going to do that Earth Day challenge. You could ride your bike, um, find a route to get to the park you want to help clean up. And while you're out on the paths, just a little reminder, we like to see good etiquette on our trails. They are very popular. I'm betting this weekend you're going to see a lot of different users out there. So remember, whether you're walking, biking, scooting, stay to the right. Um, pass with care. Let people know that you're coming. It can be easy to startle someone. And slow down when the paths are busy. Sure, on a cold winter day, it's maybe okay to go a little faster. But when it's busier, just yield to all the slower users and show common sense and be courteous. I think everyone loves our path, and that is a great thing. And if we all do our part, we won't have people who feel like it's uncomfortable or unsafe to be there. And then, obviously, May is traditionally National Bike Month. Here in Wisconsin, we've traditionally done Bike Week at the beginning of June. We are going to push that back to September so we can hopefully bring you back some of your favorite events. But we will be celebrating Bike Month, and we have this great challenge at lovetoride.net, and you can join with other people in Madison, put together a work team, encourage your friends and your coworkers to get out. There's prizes and fun to be had, even though this is still going to be virtual. I think you'll see during Bike Month that we start to offer just new opportunities for gathering um, as we start to come back to having bike rodeos for kids and learn to ride, and community rides will be starting to come back as well. And you can find 
other riding trips, lots of other great information on new projects, that, um, new facilities that have just been built or that are coming up. And as we start to plan out events like our community bike rides, our bike rodeos, learn to ride events, things like that, you can find them all online at our Bike Madison website. Thanks. Thanks, Renee. Great opportunity to get outside, get a little exercise. Um, it's clear, I think, from the science that it's much harder to transmit COVID out in the open air. Um, just a lot more air circulation and um, it's a safer place to be. So get those bikes out of the garages and um, enjoy your time outside or go take a walk in a park, uh, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I guess you could literally float a boat too now that the <laughs> ice is open. Um, I got a, a few things. I want to start by noting that April 6th is National Library Workers Day and say a preemptive thank you to all of our fantastic librarians um, who have really been doing uh, incredible work through the pandemic, both in keeping folks uh, connected to the library collections and um, in all sorts of creative ways. Um, helping to facilitate access to the internet um, and also doing all sorts of other work throughout the city um, while the libraries have been uh, closed to walk up service. So thank you librarians. Um, appropriately also April 7th is World Health Day. Great opportunity for us to reflect on the past year and uh, how we're going to continue to keep ourselves healthy and uh, invest in public health going forward. Uh, also on April 6th is the spring election. And so again, I wanna make sure that uh, we're sharing good information and that you all have what you need to make your voting plan. A um, few updates. Uh, as of yesterday, uh, we have a total of 193,002 registered voters uh, in the city of Madison. For the spring election, we've issued 30. Uh, 34,288 absentee ballots. Um, just over 50% of those have been returned. Um, and we have had uh, just over 1,000 in-person absentee voters. So if you are not one of those folks who has returned your ballot uh, or voted uh, in-person absentee, um, please do make your voting plan. The deadline to register in person at the clerk's office is April 2nd at 5 p.m. And the deadline to request an absentee ballot is today at 5 p.m. Um, if you are voting absentee, so if you, if you have your ballot uh, or if you request one today, um, please make sure that you get your completed ba ballot back to the clerk's office in one of the following ways. You can drop it in the secure drop box closest to you uh, up until 5 p.m. on April 5th. And those drop boxes are at our fire stations and at Elver Park. Um, and they are uh, secure and safe and they're checked daily. You can return your absentee ballot by mail to the city clerk's office. It must be received by no later than 8 p.m. on election day. You can drop it off in person at the city clerk's office. Um, or you can drop it off uh, at one of our in-person absentee voting sites uh, up until April 3rd. Or you can bring it to your polling place on election day. So lots of ways you can get your absentee ballot back to us. Please pick one of them. Um, Obviously, you can also do uh, in-person absentee voting. Um, it's going on now through April 3rd. Um, and uh, then you can vote in person at your polling place on Tuesday, April 6th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and you can register uh, on election day at your polling place. Um, this is important. We have had polling place uh, changes for this election. I know that it's very frustrating uh, that our polling places keep changing throughout the pandemic. Uh, it's been obviously a difficult situation to find polling places that offer us the accessibility and the spacing that we need. Um, and then obviously the hosts of our uh, polling places have had varying concerns around COVID and the pandemic 
uh, over the course of the year plus that we've been running these pandemic elections. So I want to thank all of our polling place hosts um, that are still offering that um, and encourage you to double check your polling place before you head out on election day. Uh, and you can do that at cityofmadison.com slash clerk slash where do I vote. Um, or just go to cityofmadison.com slash clerk and you can click through. Um, or you can go to myvote.wi.gov um, and there's a find my polling place option. But please do double check because many of them have changed, including my polling place, by the way. Um, or if you have questions about any of this, um, including where the in-person absentee voting sites are, you can call the city clerk's office at 608-266-4601 or email voting at cityofmadison.com. Again, please, please, please make your plan to vote. Um, know how you're going to get your ballot in to us. I want to take a moment also to talk about accessibility of voting um, and it, the attention to accessibility is just one of the ways that the clerk's office achieves our goal of making sure that every eligible voter is able to cast a ballot and have that ballot be counted. This is our focus in elections work, is making sure that everybody can cast a ballot uh, and have that ballot be counted. And we use a number of tools to do this, um, particularly on the accessibility front. Uh, we use the Disability Rights Wisconsin Polling Place Checklist on election morning to make sure that each of our polling places is accessible. We have curbside voting available at each polling place. Um, if it's difficult for a voter to access the room uh, where the polling place is, you just have to let a poll worker or the clerk's office know that you'd like to vote curbside. If you are indefinitely confined in your home due to disability, illness, or age, you can request absentee ballots for all future elections. And you can do that uh, online at the My Vote Wisconsin website. Each of our polling places has an express vote machine, um, and this includes our, our in-person absentee sites. This is a ballot marking machine that allows you to mark your ballot using a braille keypad or a touch screen with large print and high contrast options. The express vote is also compatible with SIP and PUFF devices for those who use them, and all eligible voters are allowed to use the machine. Uh, the ballots marked by the express vote are counted by the same tabulator as pen marked ballots. The express vote also offers a Spanish translation for folks uh, se habla espanol. You can ask anyone to assist you in physically marking your ballot except for your employer or your union agent. Um, your assistant will mark the candidates chosen by you and then they uh, sign the ballot in the space designated. You can also request a braille ballot either as an absentee ballot or as a ballot at your polling place. You just need to contact the clerk's office ahead of time so they can print the braille ballot for you. If you want more information about this or any of the accommodations that our clerk's office offers to increase accessibility, you can call them again at 608-266-4601 or email them at voting at cityofmadison.com. I just want to flag again that the Wisconsin Disability Vote Coalition is an invaluable resource. They have a website and a hotline uh, to provide information about voting rights, elections, they have videos that walk through the registration process, voting absentee, and voting in person. And finally, on voting, a reminder um, that if you have not already registered at your current address, you can do at, so at any absentee voting site through the second, that's tomorrow, or at the polls on election day. You need a document uh, that has your name and your current address. Um, usually this uh, might be a, a driver's license or ID card, a utility bill. Uh, from the past 90 days, bank statements, or other government documents. You're also going to need to present a photo ID when you go to vote. If you need help getting a photo ID that, that is uh, a good, good for voting, um, you can call the Dane County Voter ID Coalition hotline at 608-285-2141 for free assistance in getting your voter ID. I hope you understand how important it is uh, that that folks vote. Um, a lot of people do a lot of work to, to keep our elections accessible um, despite uh, the 
trends in Wisconsin and nationally at the legislative level to try and suppress the vote, we are doing everything we can in the city of Madison to keep the vote accessible to everybody. All right, a couple other things, opportunities for input. Um, we are in the middle of the Metro Transit Network redesign project, and we are interested in what you think about Metro Transit service. What would you like to see? What should be improved? What destinations should Metro be serving better? Um, and so staff are working on this, um, and they are very interested in your input. Um, and we have a survey to collect that input, uh, which is at mymetrobus.com slash redesign. You can click through to the survey and fill that out. Help us better understand your goals and priorities uh, for our transit network. Um, to find out more about that project, uh, there's a whole presentation and uh, background information. You can stay up updated at that website, which is mymetrobus.com slash redesign, or you can email metroredesign at cityofmadison.com. Do encourage you to, to engage with that. Uh, this is a pretty important project for our transit system, um, and it, uh, it could completely reconfigure uh, how we provide metro service. So it's important that your voice be heard in that process. Uh, another uh, opportunity for education and engagement, the Madison Public Library and the All of Us Research Program at UW-Madison are presenting a community health event series. Um, this is also in partnership with the Wisconsin Book Festival, um, and they are joining forces to present a virtual author event series focused on a range of community health issues. Partnership uh, is hoping to bring important conversations about healthcare access to our community. The series is titled New Chapters in Community Health, Healthier Communities for All of Us, and it will include four virtual author events featuring compelling stories and engaging discussion about important health issues. The events are free, open to the public, uh, and will especially focus on issues impacting those who are often underrepresented in health research, including black, Latinx, uh, seniors, and rural communities. Bonus, there will be 100 free copies of each book available for attendees uh, at these events. To find out more information uh, about the events, please visit the Madison Public Library site, uh, and that is madpl.org slash new dash chapters. That sounds like it could be quite fun, and you get a free book. Uh, on the streets division front, we are expanding our drop-off site hours beginning on Monday the 5th um, and also opening the yard waste drop-off site at uh, South Point Road. So starting on the 5th, our new hours will be Monday and Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 2.45 p.m., Tuesday and Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Saturday from 9 to 4 our drop-off sites on Badger Road and Sycamore Ave accept all of this material that is collected curbside, and we also have additional uh, services like electronics recycling, food scrap recycling, and cooking oil recycling at these locations. The drop-off site on South Point only accepts yard waste and food scraps. So I hope you can take advantage of those expanded hours. Uh, it's further in our spring cleaning efforts. Uh, and if you need more information about the streets division services or the drop-off sites, you can find that at cityofmadison.com slash streets. Uh, ending on a good news note, uh, last Friday we celebrated 2021's second Team City Awards ceremony um, and uh, had a first-time recognition of our city's safest drivers. Um, our Team City Award winners this time around uh, were Mike Keto for administration, Lauren Anderson for community services and support, Raina Glavitz for public health and safety, Emily Jorgensen for public works and land use, and Coral Manning uh, got the Mayor's Choice Team City Award. We also, for the first time, recognized our city's safest drivers. Um, I'm grateful for all of these employees who work for a whole variety of departments, including Metro, Fire, and uh, Public Works agencies. Um, and I, they are driving on our city streets many hours a week. I'm grateful for their care and skill and conscientious efforts as they drive. 
um, sometimes vehicles that weigh many tons um, safely throughout our city. I'll end as I always do with our community resources and upcoming meetings. If you need help uh, finding housing, if you're homeless or in danger of losing your housing, call 608-264-0549 or email housinginfo at cityofmadison.com. If you need help connecting to internet or phone service, call the State Public Service Commission at 608-267-3595. If you need help finding child care, call 608-216-7022. Uh, for all of these services and more, including emergency food options and to be connected with other social services in our community, you can always call the United Way of Dane County at 211 or text your zip code to 898 211. City offers a free financial resource hotline to help folks navigate financial issues related to the pandemic. You can find out more at cityofmadison.com slash financial hotline uh, or call our fabulous librarians at 608-315-5151 and they will help you get signed up. The healthcare.gov marketplace is still open. Uh, if you do not have health insurance and want to get covered uh, through the healthcare marketplace, um, please, please go to healthcare.gov to sign up. If you need help uh, navigating that, you can call 211 or visit wiscovered.com for more information and help navigating the healthcare marketplace. If you need help paying for your health insurance premiums through the marketplace, the Health Connect program uh, that run by United Way can help you with that. Uh, again, call 211 or visit unitedwaydanecounty.org slash healthconnect for information on eligibility and assistance with that program. Uh, lots of the things that we talk about in these briefings and particularly in the community resources section rely on internet access or access to a computer. Uh, if you need that, our libraries are offering appointments to use the computers. Um, so contact uh, the librarians. Again, that's 608-315-5151 for information on how to sign up for a slot on the computer at your local library. These resources and more are posted at cityofmadison.com. Click on the community resources link. Uh, you can also visit and subscribe to my blog at cityofmadison.com slash mayor slash blog uh, for lots more information. Upcoming meetings, today the first, no foolin', the uh, Madison Central Business Improvement District uh, Board meets at noon, very shortly. At 5 p.m., the Madison Public Library Board will meet. At 5.30, the Affirmative Action Commission meets. Also at 5.30, the Community Development Block Grant Committee will meet. On Monday the 5th, at 4.30, the Finance Committee meets. At 5 p.m., the Landmarks Commission meets. And at 5.30, the City County Homeless Issues Committee will meet. On Wednesday the 7th at 6.30, the Greater Madison Metropolitan Planning Organization Policy Board will meet. And I will end today by reminding you, vaccinate.wi.gov, go sign up, get your vaccine, wear your mask, wash your hands. Let's see if we have questions. Indeed we do. We have one for public health and a number for yourself, Mayor. All right, let's start with public health. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. The question for you says, health officials in Chicago are seeing a rise in cases. Are you all monitoring that and making any plans? Oh, that's a great question. Um, and it's uh, maybe a time that I could just point out that we have a fabulous data team that works in the public health department that is constantly watching our numbers locally in Madison and Dane County. They're also watching our statewide numbers. They're watching our regional numbers. And of course, they're watching our, our national and global numbers as well. Um, so they are watching what's happening in Michigan, what's happening in Chicago, what's happening to some of our neighbors. Um, and the, 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 what they're watching and, and comparing it to us, um, they kind of have provided the following. Case levels uh, in Madison, Dane County remain the lowest that they have been since August. Our percent positivity is still very low, 
yet we still have a lot of testing going on. So we are catching most of our positive cases because of the, the testing and the low positivity rate. Our rates right now, 9.4 excuse me, per 100,000 per day are lower than the Wisconsin rate at 13.6 per 100,000 per day and the U.S. rate at 18.8 .8 cases per 100,000 per day. And if we look at a little bit more of a region, Minnesota is at 27 cases per 100,000 per day. Michigan is at 54 cases per 100,000 per day. So just put that in perspective, Madison-Dane County, we're at 9.4 cases per 100,000 per day. So our rates are low and they continue to remain low. Our rates are low, our testing is high, and our vaccination is exceptional, especially in Dane County. We're at 38%. Our vaccination continues to go upward. And again, to emphasize the 65 plus population is nearly 90% vaccinated. That really helps keeping our case levels low. If we look at our 65 plus population and our neighbors to the uh, east to uh, Michigan, they're at about 50%. So we've got vaccination in Dane County and it continues to increase quickly. It's going quick in Dane County. It's also moving fast and statewide if we look at the vaccination rates. Our hospitalization trends continue to be very stable. Um, and while our cases are, are going up and down a little bit, they are staying stable in Dane County as well. We do know that we have the variants here in Dane County. Um, and so we're continuing to watch very closely because the B11 variant is the one that can transmit very quickly um, and can be a little bit more uh, lethal. Um, so we are watching uh, that variant in Dane County and we are continuing to watch uh, our neighbors and watch our cases. Our cases still remain low uh, and hopefully we can continue that trend and continue that trend to get more people vaccinated. Vaccinate.wi.gov and wear your mask, social distancing. We can keep our levels low um, and so we don't have to start worrying about what may be happening in Illinois, Michigan, uh, and Minnesota. Um, that's on us. Uh, if, if we continue to practice good sound public health practices, we can keep our rates low. We can keep uh, looking at a potentially normal uh, later summer, uh, hopefully. So continue to wear masks, distance, um, and, and we'll keep working on keeping those case levels low um, and so that we don't uh, experience the same situations that uh, the states that are surrounding us are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doug. Yes, and that's what we have for you today. Thanks, Doug. I just want to reemphasize on that. Um, you know, it, as as difficult and devastating as the pandemic has been here in Madison and Dane County, compared to other places uh, in the state and the country, we've done a relatively good job. Um, and that's in large part due to all of you who have been following the public health guidelines. Um, it's so important, particularly in light of what we're seeing in states around us, to keep it up um, and to follow the data, uh, both in the guidelines, but also in your day-to-day -day activities, right? So we, we know that it's safer um, to be outside if you're going to be around other people. Um, we know that the chances of transmission are lower. Um, we know that it's riskier to be inside with people that aren't in your household. So please, again, keep wearing that mask, keep washing your hands, keep that six foot distance between you and folks that aren't in your household and, and really make good decisions about the level of risk that you're willing to take, uh, both for yourself, but also for your family and for your community. Um, and vaccinate, 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 go and get your shot. Um, when it, you are eligible and when your appointment comes up. Um, this is our way out of this pandemic. And it's really important that we continue to make progress. We're doing great, but we have to do better. And we have to get a higher percentage of our entire community vaccinated. And um, we're working on all fronts to make that happen, but we need you uh, to help us with that. 
questions for me, Linda? Indeed. Um, the first is related to transportation. And it says, what do you think about the possibility um, of an M-Track station in Madison? And how does it fit into your overall transportation goals and vision for the city? Is the city going to actively pursue this project? That's a great question. Uh, I have already had conversations with the USDOT about uh, bringing Amtrak service to the city of Madison. I'm very excited about the prospects. Um, I think it's an absolutely essential transportation connection uh, for our city and for our region. I'm very much looking forward to uh, someday having Amtrak come uh, from Chicago through Milwaukee to Madison on up to the Twin Cities. I think this is something that would be fantastic for our economy, uh, for our region, um, and for our state. So absolutely in favor of this. We are already having conversations, again, both with USDOT and Amtrak um, and uh, with other impacted cities. So uh, hopefully stay tuned uh, on this front. I'm really excited about the uh, jobs package that the president has uh, is introducing, and I'm hopeful that, that this will be one of many benefits uh, that come to Madison as a result. Thank you, Mayor. And the next question relates to the Men's Homeless Shelter Project, and it says, do you have a response to the petition to elected officials of Madison put out by the owner-operators of the restaurants and markets at the global market regarding their concerns with the Men's Homeless Shelter Project? I haven't seen the petition, so I don't have a response to it, uh, but I uh, will say that we heard at the council meeting uh, last Tuesday from a number of those folks, um, and it, you know they had very compelling and, um, and difficult stories about their interactions with uh, folks that are, are currently unsheltered. Uh, I, I think, however, that the appropriate reaction to those negative stories and interactions is not to say that we shouldn't have a shelter, but rather, in fact, the opposite, to say that we should have a shelter. Because the problems that we're seeing now are not going to go away unless we do something different. What we need in this city is a purpose-built homeless shelter that will provide not just a place to sleep, but a place for people to connect to the services that they need in order to find permanent housing. Failing to provide those services, failing to connect people, failing to offer a pathway towards permanent housing is just going to make the problems that we're seeing now worse. We have to do something different. And I firmly believe that providing a purpose-built homeless shelter is the thing that we need to do for our community. And it will help reduce the conflicts that we're seeing in our community, not just in this area, uh, but I think really across our community. And that, that's the whole point. The whole point is that we want to help people get connected, get connected to housing, get connected to employment, get connected to treatment, whatever it is that they need to stabilize their lives um, and uh, get out of the situation where they are experiencing homelessness. So I look forward to reading the petition, but um, I think we heard a lot of the concerns that were raised on Tuesday. And again, I really believe that the solution here is to build this shelter and to provide the services that are needed in our community. Thank you, Mayor. Those are the questions we have for you today. Thank you, Linda. And thanks uh, to everyone who tuned in and joined us today. Um, we will see you next week. Here's looking forward to 70 degrees. Get out there, enjoy our parks, uh, enjoy our bike facilities, um, enjoy the great outdoors, uh, stay safe, and keep washing your hands.